and we'll go here, pick up a bow, press Z to save the game and exit. When we come back, we can see that our bow has been saved in our player character, but not in the world. Hey there, I'm your host Lesoe, and this is part 24 of our inventory series. In today's video, we'll be saving the inventory. So with that said, let's begin. Let's start by going to the content drawer, and over here, we want to right click and create a new folder called Save System. Let's go ahead and give this a different color as well. So set color, maybe something like blue. And let's go ahead and open that up. So in here, first things first, let's go ahead and create the game instance. And this is going to be responsible for saving and loading in our game data. This is the first thing that gets opened when you open your project slash game. So it knows everything about everything. So we'll go ahead to our blueprint class and search for game instance like so, and I'll call it GIB for game instance blueprint. And we'll do a dash and call it my game. So game instance blueprint, my game. So um, control S, so save that. And first thing, go to your settings, project settings, because usually I tend to forget this in maps and modes in the game instance class, switch this. Otherwise all your code could be correct, but if you don't have this in, it simply won't work. So we'll go ahead and put that there and let's save. Next, we'll go ahead and right click again, go to Blueprint class and search for a save game. Click on that, select it, and we'll do SGB for save game blueprint underscore player data. And the player data in our case is going to be the inventory and the hotbar stuff. So all of that. So let's um, open that up. And in here, we want two variables. We want one for the inventory data. And the type is going to be S underscore item slot. There we go. And you want this to be an array. And another one we'll call the hot bar data. And again, the same thing, it's an array, s underscore item slot. Um, so with that, let's compile and save. Next, we'll go ahead and right click to create a new folder called structs. And let's open that up. In here, we want to create a new structure. And we want to call this s underscore game data. Let's go ahead and open this. In here, we will create a new variable called the player data. And the type is going to be sgb underscore player data. And let's save that. Next, let's go ahead and right click and we'll go to blueprints and create a blueprint interface for our save system. So let's call it um, BPI for blueprint interface underscore save system. Let's go ahead and open that up. The first function I want to make is called a get game data. And this is going to have an output pin and it's going to return to us the game data. And this is going to be that S underscore game data structure like so. Next, then we'll create another function called load game data. In here, we don't want anything and we'll do another one called save game data. All right, and all of these, we can go to category and put them in universal. I just like to do it so I keep track of everything that's happening. And there we go. I want this to go first. Cool, so that's first. Next, we want to create another function called um, save player data, save inventory data, whatever you like. And the category, I'll just give player, since it's player related. Um, Right, now in here, we actually do want an input and we want to give this the, what, S underscore, uh, well, the name, the name we want inventory data. And the type is going to be S underscore item slot, item slot. Let's make it an array and we want another one. And this is our hot bar data. So two of these and let's compile and save. So with that finished, let's go to our game instance blueprint. Now over here, we want to go to the class settings and add the interface we created for our save system, not the interaction system. Compile and save that. Now, when we go and create a initialize function called init, so init event, init, and 
what we'll do then is I want to double click on the load game data and double click on the save game data. And in here, when we're loading this, I want to actually call whatever logic we create in here on the event initialize. So to do that, we'll do load game data and you have two options. So hover over it and the target is GIB my game. So the target is this blueprint. So that's what you want. And let's connect it here. Now for the logic, we'll do does save game exist. And this is up to you. I usually do slot one, all small. We'll do a branch and from this branch on False, I want to create a save game object. And the save game object in question is going to be that save game SGB underscore player data, our inventory stuff. And we'll go ahead and um, promote it to a variable called SGB underscore player data. And that's that. Then on true, if it does, we'll simply load game from um, slot. And the slot is again slot one. You could make this into a variable if you want. I just I prefer not to for now. And um, we'll do cast to our SGB then. And again, we'll just copy paste this. So we're setting that value there. And that's our load game data. So let's compile and save. Next, then let's go ahead and set up the get game data function. So in here, we are only returning the data. And from here, we can do a make and we have this option. Let's grab our SGB player data and plug it in. And that's all. Compile and save. Back inside the event graph on event save game data. What we want to do in here is we'll grab our save game data and do save game to slot. So whenever we want to save the game, we can simply just call this function. Very handy. And the name will do slot one. Next, we want to go ahead and double click on the save player data. And this is going to create another event for saving the inventory. So in here, um, let's grab our save data and we want to set the inventory data and we want to, again, save the hot. Oh, we not have that save the, or not save, set hot bar data. My bad. So in here, um, inventory is inventory, and then hotbar is going to be hotbar. And there we go. Um, let me just align this so I'm happy there. And once we've done that, we want to save our game. So um, to do that, again, we'll do save game, and you get two options. You want the one which says GIB, my game, or whatever your game instance is called, and connect it. And we'll do compile and save. So I notice you might get this type of an issue and this usually won't resolve itself. So what I found is if we go to our blueprint interface, we can go to save player data. I'll make these single, compile and save that. And then in here, let's refresh. It's going to save. It'll have an issue. If we go back and change it to an array, should work. I'm not really sure why this happens in the first place, but there we go. We're golden. So with all of that chaos out of the way, next we'll go to our inventory system and our inventory component. In here, we want to create a new function called get inventory data. And for that, just because we have a lot of functions in here already, it would be a good idea to give this a category. So I'll just call it save system like that. So in here, we are only returning a value and we are returning the item slots. So we'll get it and plug it into the return node. And that's all we got to do. Let's also make this a pure function. Compile and save. For our next function, we'll go ahead and call it load um, inventory data. In here, we want to set the um, item slots like so to whatever we put the input in there. We'll grab the item slots and we'll do resize. We want to resize this again to whatever our inventory size is. Just like so. And let's compile and save. 
Next, we'll go to our event graph and on event begin play. Before we do any of this resizing stuff, we can break that. This will come later. This will come if nothing's really happening. So let's do a branch. And the first thing we'll do is does save game exist? And we want to see does a slot one exist? And if it does not, well, then we'll just carry on with our default stuff, which will just say resize. If it's true, then we'll do get um, get whoops get game instance, and in here we will do get game data, and we have access to whatever we want. We'll break it open, and in our case, it's going to be the player data. We'll do is valid, and if it's valid, we then shall get the inventory data and do load inventory data. And there we go. So let's compile and save. Next, we want to go ahead and open up our hotbar inventory or hotbar component. And we want to do pretty much something very similar. So go to functions, we'll create a new function called get hotbar data. Again, I'll just put it into save system. And in here, we'll do a return node to return the item slots. Now, if you don't see this, go into your gear icon and do show inherited variables. So I already have this on. That's why it's showing for me. And just get your item slots and plug it in there. Compile and save. For our next function, we'll go ahead and call this our load hotbar data. In here again, we'll just set the item slots, to whatever the input pin is. We want to resize like we normally do. So do a get and do resize. And this value again will be the inventory size. And at the very end, we just want to update our inventory. And this is so that our hotbar gets updated. And real time at the start. Compile and save. Next on the event graph, we want to go ahead and create an event called begin play. Now after begin play, we need one more node. Now I'm not exactly sure what it's called. But if we go to our character equipment, we have it here. This essentially just lets our child um, have its own code there. So in here, we'll paste it in it should connect. So this is what you normally get if you have created a parent blueprint and then created a child blueprint. Now I'm sure I've deleted this, so that's why I didn't have it. So anyways, after we do have it, we'll do a does save game exist. And if it does, we want to check for slot one. Again, do a branch. And on false, we'll do update inventory. Like so. And on true, we'll do get game instance and we will get the game data. And that's the wrong one, uh, get game data uh, message. And from here, we'll do a break. Oh, this should be context sensitive. We'll do a break and we'll do is valid. And if it's valid, we will Let's break this open or get the hotbar data and we'll do load hotbar data. And let's uh, compile and save. Next, inside the save system, we'll go ahead and create a new blueprint class of type blueprint function library. And let's call it bpfl underscore save system. Let's open that up. In here, I want to create a function called save player data. And what we are saving is we'll do get player, player, whoop, later, player character. And we want to cast to our third person character ourselves. And now we have access to all of the good stuff. So let's do get inventory. We can do get hotbar component. 
we can do get game instance and we'll do get game data. I can spell correctly, get game data with the message. Connect it um, to, 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 oh no, my bad. Save player data with the message. And from here we can do get inventory data. We made a function and do get hotbar data. And we can also double click on that. Just click here and make it pure. Saves us um, to do have to, to have to do an execution pin there. That's all good. And there we go. So we can safely then compile and save. And one thing left to do is let's go to our controller. So we'll go to player hero controller. And whenever a I press a key of my choice, so we'll do this very quickly. In my case, I'll just do keyboard Z. Whenever I press Z, we'll um, save the player oh, data. And you can see it's coming from the blueprint function library, and that's what we want. Save player data. Compile and save. Before we test this, let's go to our content drawer and right click on any of your blueprints. So go anywhere, right click and do show in Explorer. Now we want to see if our game is saving in the first place. So let's go to our inventory system, go to saved, go to your to two save games. We don't have anything. So that means our game hasn't been saved. So let's hit play and we'll go here, pick up a bow, press Z to save the game and exit. When we come back, we can see that our bow has been saved in our player character, but not in the world. So if we go to our content drawer, I'll open up our, again, show an explorer, go to inventory system, saved, save games. There we go. Slot one, which we made. We can easily go ahead and select it and delete it. So when we compile and play the game again, we don't have anything in our inventory. So when I go to pick up a bow or a clothing item, and if we move this around in our inventory, it should get saved in this exact position. So let's save the game, leave and come back. And there we go. Our stuff is saved. Now this should not be here. So we'll see what that's about in the next episode. So this is it for the video. In the next episode, we'll be taking care of saving and loading the actors from the actual level. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, leave a like, and as always, happy developing!